What's up, people? We are live at five here at Broadway.com. It is Friday, February 21st, which means Sunday, February 23rd is my dad's birthday. Oh, happy my goodness. Birthday, happy, dad. Early happy birthday, early dad. birthday, dad. Look at that. But it's not about him or me. Okay. It's about Andy Lefkowitz. <laughs> <laughs> and also our amazing guest, we have Courtney Reed here from Cambodian Rock Band do, you, at Signature Theater. Yes. You may have seen her on a magic carpet at some point in yes. your life. Or, uh, or in the Heights. Snobby's Bodega. Um, uh, and we also have Caitlin Moynihan. We forgot to introduce Caitlin Moynihan. Yeah. Oh. Have her do her customary oh. jazz hands. I was also going to say... Yes. I have a lot to say. I know. I have a lot to Andy say. Is I, another reason I love that the fact that Courtney Reed is our guest today is that... Oh, go ahead. The yesterday... Andy is such a, such a okay. theater nerd. Out so out he nerded out. This week. Because yesterday our guest was Priscilla Lopez, who for a time played her mom in, in The Heights. <laughs> So oh, it's like, this MG. makes me a happy theater nerd. <laughs> Andy just linked to It's like a theme people. of two days. I did I'm it on very purpose. happy about this. But Courtney, I wish you could have seen how excited he was when he actually figured it out. When I that figured out. this out on Monday, I was like, guys, this is so cool. <laughs> I was very happy. I wish I could say I, I did it on so, purpose. So that means what? Robin it. De Jesus on Monday, okay. maybe? I saw him right. last night. Oh, at opening the opening of West Side, Side Story. Story. Robin, and he was with uh, Vanessa Hudgens, oh my his goodness. Tick Tick Boom, boom. film co star. He's fancy. Directed now. by Lynn. Oh, and the world goes oh around. Oh my God, stop <laughs> right? with the In the Heights. I can't wait Come till that. Come on. We love In the Heights. Is it Friday yet? Oh my goodness. <laughs> wait, for the. <laughs> It's been a long four day week. It sure everybody. is. Everybody. Yes. Um, so we'll get to Ms. Reed, but first, Indeed. today's top five. Yes. All right. So we're starting off today with kind of some sad news. Well, we're all laughing. I know. I know. We're I know. Just laughing through the pain. Right. This is very sad. We found out last Don't night. Don't say it. I won't say it. <laughs> just cover your ears. Okay. Uh, we found out that the new two part play, The Inheritance, will play its final no. performance on March 15th no. at the Barrymore Theater. No. I know. No. I know. It's <laughs> so very sad we're news. We're not doing the show today. I'm this out. is a Show's very. Canceled. I know. It's so sad. Wonderful new two-part play um, no, that people Andy. have been super excited about. Why don't and people? I don't understand. I know. I don't know. Why it's can't very, we very have good sad. things? Right. In 2020, isn't that right. what we're all aiming for? In 2020, good it's things. Very sad. Like the Inheritance, mm -hmm. my favorite play yeah. ever, maybe. So the Inheritance came over to New York after lots of acclaim in London, and, and it, it won the Olivier. Won for, the Olivier for yeah. best new play. Yeah. Uh, it's written by Matthew Lopez, sure who's is. actually Priscilla Lopez's. Nephew. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> I, I'm just, the world is going around here. In a, in a, uh, oh anyway. Everything revolves around Priscilla I'm Lopez, I I'm guess. Sorry, guys. I'm, I'm in In the Heights mode. Um, <laughs> but uh, uh, The Inheritance opened on November 17th. Um, by closing, it will have played 138 regular Not performances. Enough. Um, I do hope that there is another life for um, the inheritance. I yeah, think like so a many. Netflix series. That would be incredible. Ryan, Immediately. Ryan Murphy. Can we, Ryan Murphy, Ryan. can you yeah. get over there and Come fall on. in love with it? Seriously. So oh. you have um, about three and a half more weeks to check out The Inheritance at the Barrymore Theater. Mm -hmm. Andy. I know. It's sad. And there are some big changes happening in the netherworld. Oh, that's clever. Thank you. So, uh, Sophia and Caruso, who played, who opened in Beetlejuice as Lydia. Yes. Um, she left the show on Wednesday. Wednesday was her final performance. We just found out today. Um, she announced on social media, I think, and then the show made a statement. But she left on the 19th because she is, um, she has a, you know, when you get a contract, there's certain clauses, and she's pursuing TV work. So she left the show, and now Presley Ryan, who is the understudy mm -hmm. in the role, who we've seen on the vlog, right? We've seen her. She on started this. the TikToks. She's a TikToker. Oh, she's so she hardcore into TikTok. Yeah. Um, she's playing the role through this weekend, yes. And then we're finding out a permanent replacement. That's so, correct. So this is a this is a three day news story, like for it is, but, it but is. But through the weekend, yeah. um, and she's been the understudy since it opened, and she was on Broadway in Fun Home and the national tour of How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Doctor Seuss's How the Doctor Seuss. Just in case it was like point. Arthur Miller's How the Grinch yeah. Stole Christmas, they have to put that in there. I know it's you know? a thing. I would see um, that. So anyway, and as we previously announced, Beetlejuice is closing on June six. At the Winter Garden. There's rumors, maybe that. Yeah, that mm, it might have another life. Maybe. Who knows? I don't know. But uh, well, sorry, to, sorry to see you go, Sophia and Caruso. We'll yeah. see you around yeah. or on TV. And Presley mm -hmm. Ryan, have a great weekend in the role, and we'll find out what's happening next week. There you go. Hmm. 
And this power couple just really loves acting together. Yes, so this is pretty cool. Um, Bobby Cannavale and Rose Byrne, longtime life partners who are currently appearing in Medea at the Brooklyn Academy of Music, will team up again for a benefit production or performance of uh, The View from the Bridge. Arthur Speaking Miller. Arthur Miller. Miller. Arthur Miller. From the my bridge. segue. You didn't know it yet, but. Arthur, oh yeah, Arthur Miller is the view from the bridge. Man, Dr. Seuss is <laughs> the view. No, um, this will be on March 23rd at uh, Hunter College's K Playhouse. Um, so they'll be playing the roles of um, what are their, what are those characters' names? They're the husband and wife. Yeah, the husband and wife. Uh, based on the last revival, the Liev Schreiber role and the Jessica Hecht role. That was not the last revival. Oh my God, you're right. That Andy. was two revivals ago. Andy. The Evo Van Ho yeah, revival. Evo Van Ho came one. and dumped Mark, Red Rain all over that play. It was Mark, good. What was his last name? Huh? It was amazing. The guy in the last revival. Oh, don't mark something. Mark Strong. Mark Thank Strong. you. We have an incredible publicist here who's helping us out. Um, <laughs> and the prior revival was Anthony LaPaglia and, and Allison Janney. Okay, Janney. now you're adding Allison information Janney. to make up for the fact that you made a mistake. <laughs> right now you're like, Mantello. and in 1981. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so what's cool about this one night production is that it's going to precede a production of the view of you from the bridge that's going to debut at Sydney Theatre Company in what? Australia oh. with Bobby Cannavale and Rose Byrne. Uh, oh, wait, December I didn't know that. This is like a yeah. sneak peek of an actual production? Indeed. Yeah. So, what? Uh, check wait. them out. Yeah. And Bobby, <laughs> yeah. Bobby Cannavale is also finally playing, uh, what's it, uh, Stanley Kowalski, isn't he? With Audrey McDonald? Yes, oh, oh my yes, gosh. And Streetcar Named Desire? Yes. Bobby Cannavale yeah, is really checking off the boxes. This is legit, guys. I know. It's, it's, it's all He's happening. He's amazing. <laughs> um, and so is Rose Byrne. So, uh, she, yeah, but wait a minute. So, yep. when are they doing okay. the Australia? So, the I'm, Australian I'm trying production to figure out if Streetcar can come to Broadway right. first. So, the Australian <laughs> production of View from the Bridge starts in December 2020 and it runs through February 2021. But we so can see it on March 23rd. That Tony slot in the spring for uh, them to. Okay. Okay. Then Audra will win her seventh Tony. I'm sorry, yeah. I'm mixing news. It's I'm right. mixing Bobby kind of volley news. Are we, when's Courtney Reed coming? <laughs> right? We still got two more Just news two items. Two more news items <laughs> of Lauren Yee's. Cambodian rock band. Yes. Come on. But first, I'm going to tell you guys the fact that this off-Broadway show hasn't even opened yet, and it already got an extension. It's yes. Dana H. It's by Lucas Nath. He's very talented. He adds an rhyme. H. <laughs> Lucas Nath. Um, and it's at the Vineyard, and it's a big hit. It's supposed to start, it's supposed to close March 22nd. Now it's closing March 29th. That's all the news I got. Yes, indeed. And now we officially know when London audiences can let it go. Totally. So we got production dates today for the London debut of Frozen. Uh, we already knew the production was happening, but now we know it will begin previews on October 30th of this year and open on November 11th. Uh, we don't know any casting yet. Oh, but not we even have... two weeks of previews. Right. Ooh. They got to get a lot of magic to work in two weeks. No? There's Disney magic do to it. do Disney over at Frozen. It. Disney does it. But uh, we've heard that Samantha Barks is rumored to play the role of Elsa. Um, I assume that's going to happen. Don't start rumors. Amazing, I know, man. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, that's that's your news. Mm. I mean, she'll be fantastic. Yeah. Oh my god, I love her too. voice. It's so beautiful. Uh, also, West Side Story opened, and we have some great portraits coming mm. up. We did. Caitlin McNaney shot a portrait booth last night, yes. and we have a, a first look at the cast of The Minutes. Yes, the Tracy Minutes. Letts's new play, so starring about it. Tracy Letts mm -hmm. and others. Jesse Mueller. I know. Come on. I knew you were go there. Jesse Mueller. She was never in In the Heights. Nope. He was not in the heights. <laughs> nope. That's fair. Uh, and so also, too cruel for school. Remember that? It's like a throwback. <gasps> yes. Throwback. Yeah. The yeah. Final one. Yeah. 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 Too for school. <laughs> yeah. I got verklempt watching it. Surprise oh, episode. Oh, now we're thinking. Who? Yeah, Who? I, I got verklempt. Who? Me. Oh, you did? I did. Watching the yeah, vlog? it's Erica's last vlog. Yeah, oh. I know. Erica yeah. Henningsen started the year. But she's going to be in Flying Over Sunset, so it's all good. It's fine. Oh, right. Yeah, I'm not worried. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, Andy. Enough. <laughs> Thanks that was a long me. news segment. That I was. apologize to our guests. Actually, we always geek out. That's the thing. <laughs> so uh, hey, yeah. Caitlin, are you still over there? Yes, I'm here. Can you tell everyone about today's guest, please? Gladly. Yes, of course, you guys. We have Miss Courtney Reed here with us today. She's going to talk all about Cambodian rock band, which is opening on Monday. It's so exciting. You guys may know her as the Broadway's original Princess Jasmine from Aladdin, but you know, her other Broadway credits include... 
in the Heights <laughs> and Mama Mia as well. <laughs> you guys can follow along with whatever she's up to on social media at Rhodes Reed, R H O D E S R E E D. Leave all of your questions down in the comments below and please welcome Courtney and Paul. Oh, thank you, Caitlin. Hello. What an Courtney intro, Marie. Queen. We finally got to you. Oh my gosh, finally. <laughs> <laughs> about to walk out. It was torture. So you, look, <laughs> you guys are hilarious. Um, oh my how gosh. are you? You look, first of all, you look gorgeous. Thank you. I, I beat my face the for you. The makeup is always. It's good. It's always good. You, you wake up She's like not that, don't of you? Of course, darling. In a full <laughs> lash. Always. I love it. So how is uh, Off-Broadway? Off-Broadway is different, it's different than Broadway. It's, it's very different. different. Yeah, but tell me, let's, no, let's go same, through how it's, it's different. Same, it's same, same, but different. Um, well, you share dressing rooms. That's you, different. Okay, so how's yeah, that going? Yeah, you share dressing rooms. Um, you it's actually great. It's a, literally like, it is a cast of six, and there's two girls, and all the rest are boys. They're all crammed in a dressing room, and we're like, oh. beer, so we like our cot set up. It's great. <laughs> we're like, work, we're going to take a nap now. <laughs> it's great. It's, uh, it's great. No, I'm just joking. It's it's yeah. amazing. It, yeah. Signatures, I've never worked with them. They're they're phenomenal. Like yeah. they're just like hanging out in the space is fierce. You it's can go there and just theater. like if you haven't bring been your there laptop, on 42nd free Wi-Fi. and tenth between ninth and tenth. Close yeah. to tenth. Yep. Yeah. It's beautiful. Uh and it's gorgeous. That, like that little coffee shop and the tables and that little bookstore and they the, have delicious empanadas. And, oh, I didn't yeah, know. Yeah, they have flatbread. Hot tip all the Rick things, <laughs> all the things. They have happy hour drinks. Well, Sometimes nice. we get free free um drink the cast slits. isn't out I they're not the drinking signature. in the lobby before the show no, of course not no 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 because uh never. lauren yee's cambodian rock band I, I feel like we always have to say the name of the you have to say so lauren this yee. is actually um i don't know much about her work uh but she's extremely acclaimed and this is like a residency for her right with yeah, signature. This is, so, this yeah. Is, so there'll be a bunch of her pieces Mm -hmm. through, and then this is the first one. Yeah, this is the first, right? Yeah. Yeah, this yeah, is, yeah, she, yeah. she kicked off with uh, Cambodian Rock Band. Yes, yeah, so you got yeah, to be part season of it. Five, yeah, yeah, oh, so awesome. So fill me in. Fill me in. Give me some, g educate me. Give me some history lessons here. This is a play about a lot. <gasps> it's a play about so a I, lot. And I want to teach the kids because, and myself, because, uh, you know, there might be a lot of um, Princess Jasmine fans out there, right? I mean, you, sure. you were in Aladdin for a long time, oh all over gosh. the place. Yeah, 20 years. All over the place. Same as you at Broadway.com. The day I started at Broadway.com, you were in that, <laughs> and you're still a great. A lot of Botox. Uh, you're still, no, and you played it as recently as, like, a couple months ago. It literally. <laughs> like, you're still Princess Jasmine. Literally. You literally oh flew to Signature on that I magic carpet. I sure did. I sure and did. And you did it in London, right? Yeah, that yeah. was crazy. That was sort of like a last minute thing. Very, yeah. very like. Well, oh. because if they need a Princess Jasmine, they can call you. Yeah, it's like, I who, mean, who, you know, it's you like know Ghostbusters. The lines. You know what I mean? Like, you just, who do you call? <laughs> Courtney Reed. <laughs> I like that. I but, like that. Um, so, okay, yeah. but Cambodian rock band, mm -hmm. um, the, I mean, t the Cambodian genocide of the 1970s. I mean, we're dealing with very large things here. So, can you sort yeah. of uh, fill us in a little bit with the history and sort of how the play. It takes that history and turns it into a great night of theater. Yeah, okay. Well, it. I always say this play is so hard to describe because it's a play about so many things. Mm -hmm. But you go into this experience thinking it's going to be something and you leave mm. and, and it, it's something completely different than what cool. you thought. And what you're getting in this show is you're getting a father-daughter story. Mm -hmm. um, you're getting generational differences, um, you know, uh, a history lesson on Cambodian genocide, mm -hmm. which happened in the 70s during uh, the Vietnam War and the Khmer Rouge and Pol Pot and all that stuff. And then on top of it, you're getting this epic rock music from the time. A lot of it is in Cambodian, some of it's in English. Mm -hmm. But um, it's this, you know, Cambodian rock band is this Western style rock band from the 70s. So you're getting some awesome 70s costumes. And, cool. and, and there's a lot of comedy in the show. So it's not all... Dramatic. It's not like when you watch the movie Crash and just like everything's just so sad. Yeah. You don't go into this show feeling that way. It mm -hmm. actually it, it starts kind of with a bang and and you're you're laughing, you're crying, you're um, rocking out. Mm -hmm. It's just it's everything that you want in a play and more. Cool. And um, yeah, it's and, awesome. And it's opens Monday. So also, opens on, Monday. on the website, it's actually described as an intimate rock epic, which I yeah, love. It and is the, an the intimate words rock. intimate and epic together are so interesting. The only word that's missing is iconic. Iconic. It's iconic, well, intimate rock starring epic. Starring the iconic Courtney Reed, a talented <laughs> ensemble of actors. 
Um, Truly. <laughs> I mean, they, they're amazing. I'm just like the tree in the so back. So are you ready for opening night? Is it? Is yeah, it, we're yeah. ready. We're yeah. so ready. Cool. You know, it's that weird feeling where it's like you're in previews, you're in rehearsals or whatever, and you kind yeah. of feel like you're never going to get there, and then it sort of like locks in, like right before opening. Mm -hmm. That's the feeling. Mm -hmm. It's. I can't wait for you to see it. Yeah, me too. I'm excited to see it. Yeah. I'm excited to see the, the fashion, especially. The fashions. The fashions like are right. You're teasing some well, there's, fashion. So it, so it takes place in the 70s. It also takes place in 2008. So the fashions in 2008 aren't as cute. Right. So be prepared. I, I don't know. Is 2008 because 2008 even specific? Like, it's like, like in the Heights time. <laughs> Right? 2008-ish. Oh Always got to bring it back, you know? <laughs> got to bring it back to In the Heights. Yeah. That was a good show, too. It's such a good show. In the Heights. Yeah, that Would was the Hamilton that? before. I was play, Carla. You, Car Carla. Carla. It was Carla. I understudied Nina and Vanessa, though. Right, I know. So it was like, all I got the, to play you, you all, sort of play all play the ladies. All of them. Again, yeah. you just need a car. But if they if they needed a Carla, like an immediate Carla, would you be able to drop in? I've had nightmares. <laughs> have you, I've had nightmares have of like you? having to go back into that show and not, not remembering anything. I mean, like, no me diga. That's like <laughs> no me it. Diga. Like, no me diga. You know how often I say no me diga. I say Do you it really? because of the song. Yeah, Get absolutely. Out. That's I literally, I, I saw Daphne Urban Vega, who's in the, the upcoming film, and I literally was oh, like, right. is No Me Diga in the movie? <laughs> it's is like, it? Yes. Oh, it has to I be. I was told it is. I mean, Wait. it has to be. It's also, a lot of plot, actually, in No Me Diga. There is. You, a, there's a lot of information. There's a lot of info. Yeah, yeah. You find I mean, a lot about yeah. Carla. You find out a lot about Carla <laughs> as well in that song. I mean, who didn't cry when they watched that trailer, though, right? Oh, my God. Like, I, why was I bawling? I was because bawling. it's in the heights. And, it's well, it's also so part of your good. life. And, and it's true. just such a beautiful story. Anyway. So true. Yeah. It's, it's What kind of emotions do we get from combining rock band? I guess we get to rock out. We oh, get to watch. So Yeah, you get to rock out. Oh, I don't know. You feel a lot of, like, I don't, it's interesting. These characters, you really identify them. You don't have to be Asian, Asian American. You don't have to be a specific ethnicity to really identify with these characters, which mm -hmm. I love. You just have to live. And mm. have understood history and life to, mm -hmm. and, and actually you probably leave learning a lot too. Like, yeah. oh my gosh, a lot of people feel like they want to go home and, and research a lot about the Cambodian genocide. You it's just one of those. Start yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. I mean, I feel ashamed when I before when I read this uh, the script mm -hmm. by Lauren Yee. When I read that, <laughs> I when I was uh, going in for it, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm so ashamed. I don't know any of this history, uh -huh. and and it's not really our fault. We don't really learn it in the in his, they sort right. of breeze over right. it in history when we're like in high school or something. Yeah. But I went home. I I mean, I a lot of people go home after seeing the show and they just, they get on the internet and they, they look it up and they, they educate themselves and, and that's kind of why we do this, right? Mm -hmm. It's to tell stories that matter mm -hmm. and you hope that you impact them in a way that mm -hmm. they, they go home and they do that. You so, are yeah. half Vietnamese, correct? Yeah, yeah. Uh, what is it like to be in, in an Asian company like this? Uh, like it, Cambodian rock band? I, I can't even explain it. It feels like they, they felt, it, there's this sort of, um, unsaid acknowledgement mm -hmm. among the Asian community or among this sh cast that you just feel like, no, you, you sort of, you get me mm -hmm. in a way. It's like when you watch the show too, it's Chum, who plays my dad, is kind, he's a, he's a Cambodian dad and actually he's co Cambodian in real life, but he is like almost like every Asian dad or like every Asian <laughs> mom or dad or aunt and uncle that you have. It's like, they're all like that. And so that's why it's so funny. We've had a bunch of Asian American nights uh -huh. where people are just howling because they're like, this is my life. Um, and, and I feel, I think for a long time in this industry, it, it was tough to feel like you couldn't, I'm like all of a sudden getting to deep talks, but it's tough to feel a little bit like you can't you can't be your own ethnicity because mm. it will hinder you from casting. Mm. Mm. And I think for a long time, people would ask, you know, what's your ethnicity? And I'm like, well, you know what? I don't want to say, and it, I, I don't think it should matter mm. because I should be able to go out for whatever, right. you know, you think I, I look like. And then I think after a while, it was kind of like, I'm proud of being happy enemies and, and I shouldn't have to feel like I need to hide that. And, and I think in this show, I really feel like, wow, I get to play a Southeast Asian. And like, my mom was born and raised in Thailand, which is, you know, so close to Cambodia. And, and the language is not the same, but when I was learning uh, the lyrics to, you know, the, learning the Khmer and the Cambodian, it was like familiar sounds to me. Like I would play the music for my mom and she'd be like, I feel like I need, I feel like I should understand what they're saying, but I don't. Right. Um, but yeah, I feel a lot of pride being in the show, like so much. Um, yeah, deep talk. We just had like therapy sessions with Courtney Reed just then. I don't know. Like it, it was deep, but yeah. Um, yeah, I love it. Yeah. Cool. I love it too.
I'm glad, I'm glad to. I'm, I'm. I'm. I'm glad that you're in a play. I mean, with music, but it's also, you know, if people, yeah. you know, this this is this could do a lot of things for you because when you do something like Aladdin and you get so associated with it, completely, you really want to find a project that'll show other sides of yourself to people. Totally. I know it's funny. It's like I think you assume too that people are just like, oh no, they they know other there's other sides of me, but they don't. You know, they really don't until yeah. until they see you do something, and um. You know, I love Aladdin, and I'll, I'll I'll be in it until I'm 90. But um, <laughs> but no, it, it is it's it's beautiful and and um, challenging and a beautiful challenge to do something that's totally the opposite. Yeah. Yeah. What did you think of the Aladdin film? The totally different, the the big hit film, and now there's gonna be a sequel. This is really what I want to get there's to. There's gonna be a sequel. They announced they're gonna make a sequel. Get so out. So let's see. Let's think a plot. What could the plot? What? Of a Jafar? Sequel? Does Jafar return? Wait, what? you guys. I'm gonna out myself right now. I haven't seen it. Haven't seen it. That's so fair. this is what happened. So I was in London and we were That's all That's okay, but by the way, you out. know what's not okay? What? Not no. seeing The Inheritance. Go see The Inheritance. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. We always got to like bring it back. Sorry, I'm a little obsessed. I need um, to see it. But I'll it's okay. It. You, well, first of all, you can see it whenever. But it must be weird when you have your own history with something. Thing. No, no, the thing or is, you're I just was like, pumped. I know the plot. What I no, I was, I was pumped. I was in London. I happened to be doing the show. We were all like so excited. So we were like, we were like, Disney, you're going to put a screening up for us. This is going to be awesome. And then like, they were like, oh, we need to wait until after this. And then it never happened. And then everyone started trickling in to see the film. And then it was like the last one that hadn't seen it. And right. I was like, I can't be like sitting at home, and like Netflix and to chill, to like watch <laughs> it by myself. I need to experience this with somebody else. And then every time. I'm gonna out my boyfriend, Brock. But every time I'm like, let's just watch Aladdin, he's like, mm, nah. He's <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, let's watch, uh, what's the Al Pacino film? Irishman. And he's like, I feel like we should watch The Irishman. <laughs> I'm like, no, I don't want to watch. You could have watched like Aladdin twice long. in that amount of time. So the sequel. So it's his so. Time. Do you think like Aladdin and Jasmine do they have kids? Maybe it's about like they have kids. And then one of the kids oh. discovers the. Wait, one. wait. I don't know. What if what if it's what if it's actually like. The kid, they have kids, and it's like the kids go to college. And that's what it is. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, maybe it's like modern times. Maybe that's like they live like in LA. Oh my gosh, maybe that would be, I would definitely have watched that like immediately. Total reboot. Total reboot. Hey, Caitlin. Yes. What are you doing over there? Uh, what are the people online saying? Yes. All right. So the first thing Scott oh. says, Cambodian rock brand was brilliant. What was oh. the biggest reason oh. you took on this project? Question mark. Dot, dot, dot. By the way, it is a must-see show with eight exclamation points in all caps, you guys. Aww. Oh, my gosh. The reviews all are caps. in. The reviews Cancel are the real. opening. The reviews Stop. are in. Put They're them in. in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. I think it's pretty obvious that the reason why I want to do I, I like, my bucket list was always I need to do a play. Mm. Yeah. Because the moment you do a play, it's like doing Law & Order. It's like a, it's a rite of passage. <laughs> you know what I mean? I was like, I need to do a play. And have when I Law read it, I have done a lot of what, SVU. What did you do on, um, what were you on I was SVU? a season premiere of it was a two hour long special so I, don't um, I played a rookie cop Oh, cool. Oh. Officer Gonzalez. In like a uniform? Obviously. How, did you, how'd you look in the uniform? Were Actually, you full beat? it was okay. Or was it more like... I was medium beat. I was like, I, I came in with a lash extension though because <laughs> I knew for sure they weren't going to give me lashes. They gave me like a titch of beat and I was like, oh, this is definitely law and order. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank Sorry, gosh, I got my extensions. So but you anyway. did law and order, you had to do apply. Yeah, I had to do a play. <laughs> and I was like, and I read the script and I like bawled my eyes out. Oh. I was like, I think... I think I think I'll die if I'm not cast in the show. This I need to do the show, mm -hmm. and it was like you know Southeast you Asian. For it? I auditioned for it. I, I taped for it. Actually, I was in L.A. because okay. you know I live in L.A. now, um, so Are I you, taped for that, it. L.A.'s home. L.A.'s home for me now. Wow. I love it. It's so sunny and I'm gorgeous. All right, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so, and so yeah, I read it. I was like, I need I need to book the show. I'm obsessed. Um, yeah, and just like being like, I never get to play my own ethnicity. This is the closest ever. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And not only to come back to New York to do something, but in the winter. So, you know, you really wanted to do it. I know. An L.A. girl coming to New York in the winter. I know. I you really wanted it. <laughs> in the winter. Yes. And not Anna Wintour. <laughs> yes. Amazing. Oh, my gosh. I hate myself. <laughs> so, Violet wants to know, I just saw the show, and you singing in another language, oh. question mm -hmm. mark? Mm -hmm. What was that like? Can you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah. So, I got cast, and then... Uh, they were like, you know, you have to be available for this three-day workshop. And I was actually doing, I was in Aladdin for two weeks. And I was like, yeah. And I was about to do another reading of an incredible play by Anna Nogueda um, that's actually 
probably going to have another life, but it's called Mask Only. I don't know if you heard about it. It's like waiting for Adina Menzel. But it's so amazing. Anyway, I was about to do that, and I was like, I was like so jam-packed, and I, I did this workshop, and I learned the music. It's so not traditional in the way that you learn this music. Like, you know, when you learn music for a musical, this is not a musical, you yeah. like get a plunked out versions, you sit down with the, you know, piano, and you yeah. learn it. It was like, no, the whole band was there, and oh. they were like watching me learn this music. Oh, wow. And then we had this... Uh, incredible um, dialect coach. Her name is Soak. She came in and she helped me with all of the the, the dialect, which was the hardest. Mm. Cambodian is not like a language that you can just pick up. Mm. It's really difficult. The sounds are like really far back and like they don't, they, they're very, they were unfamiliar. Well, they're kind of familiar to me, but that wasn't the most challenging part. It was like learning it all and like trusting that you're going to remember these words because they wow. don't, mm. you know, really makes sense. It's a completely <laughs> different language. I do I do know what everything means though because there's translation. So I just need to put that out there. Yes. And you're pulling yes. it off. Uh, you know what the people ca- telling the you Kamai you're doing, audience you're doing a good job. is okay. they were convinced that I was Kamai. And I was like, you know what? That's all I need. They were like, I could understand everything you were saying so clearly. Makes and I was sense. like, oh my gosh, thank goodness. I can sleep now. I can like <laughs> sleep at night. That was like my worst fear <laughs> is them coming and be like, you're butchering our language. <laughs> it, it's okay though. Yeah. Music. It's great. Yes. All right. So we can do one last question. And Lex wants to know, what are you most looking forward to opening night? And they want to know what if you have an outfit ready. Oh. I have they... two choices. Okay. I wanted to do either something fierce in the 70s. Both and we could have voted on I one. know. Voted. This is tragic. <laughs> um, uh, uh, it's between, yeah, I have two options. Um, <laughs> I colors? don't know. I'm going to, okay. Palette? The palette, so they're like very, kind of like Asian inspired. Okay. The palettes are either a red and gold mm. or um, like a satin, like magenta pink with like floral embroiders. Those both sound incredible. I can, mean, what if, can you change halfway through the night? Wait, an outfit this is the best thing. idea literally That's ever. That's a thing. They do that in Hollywood. They sure do. Your co you know stars what? will be like, <laughs> did she change her outfit? They are going to be like, this girl is so extra. <laughs> More extra, like oh, they already think I'm extra. They're gonna be like this girl, I cannot. Oh my gosh! But I'm most looking forward to my parents seeing the show. Oh, for sure. I know it's like super cheesy, but like a part of the reason why I was so pumped to do this show is because I was like, my parents are gonna die over the show. They're gonna love it Amazing. so much, and they're coming to opening. They haven't seen it yet. Oh, I love that. That's so exciting. I Where know, do they live? Right? They live in um, Elgin, Illinois, which is outside of Chicago. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, you know Chicago? No, but I knew you were from there. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I know my research. You, you know everything. I've known you a while, girl. I know. It's been a while. Twenty it's been a years. <laughs> Twenty years on that magic carpet. <laughs> not true. Not true. What a mess. What okay, a mess. everyone, go see. Wouldn't you want to see this? I'm dying to see it now. Courtney Reed <laughs> is in uh, Lornese, Cambodian rock band. <laughs> At the Persian Persian Square Signature Center on 42nd. Yeah. Yes. And it's playing through what? It's like extended and it's playing for yeah. a while. March something. Uh, 15th. I'm getting 15th. 15th. 21st. March 15th. 58th, 20th. But like we legit, like we have like <laughs> five shows that have tickets. Everything else is sold out. Oh, wow. But they're doing, but they did uh, stand, um, not standing room, um, wait list. Usually everyone that's on, they put themselves on the wait list in person. They get oh. in. Right. Which is nice because some people end up not showing up, subscribers or something like that. And you but can go on the wait list and then houses. sit at the bar and have exactly. a cocktail. I mean, have it's such a, a relaxing cocktail, place. Have an empanada, to do. get some lentil soup, like anything you want. Oh, cool. Truly. The empanadas are apparently very good. From They're what so I hear. good. The black bean ones are the best. <laughs> <laughs> would Carla approve? She would. She'd be like, no me diga. No oh me diga, empanadas. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. It was so good to see you. you you're the best. No, you're the best. You're the best. Hey, <laughs> Caitlin, yeah. you're the best too. Why don't you take us out? Thank you guys so much for tuning in to this very fun and giggly episode of Live at Five. We are Live at Five every single weekday here on Facebook. And you can listen to us where we get your podcast by searching for hashtag Live at Five and hitting that subscribe button. Be sure to tune in on Monday when we talk to Alex Newell of Zoe's Extraordinary Playlist.